Guardians of the Galaxy was a pleasant surprise and treat. It's one of those games where it didn't have years of build up. It just kind of came out of the blue and it was a pleasant surprise indeed. It was good because it didn't build up any unrealistic expectations after waiting so long. So we just kind of expected what we got because it was such short notice. It was a happy delight. Yes, you can't play with other Guardians, but hey, it's still a fun game and a blast to get deep into the lore of the game's universe. Being a comic book reader, it really felt like a literal video game playing the comic book. Star Lord, you already know. Space Pirates, the Guardians. How strong are they? in this game universe you already know star lord is the main man of the game and he's very powerful himself with his elemental guns that can do a lot of different things throughout their adventure you got rocket he loves explosives and he's the tech master of the group groot is basically a living tree he's very powerful physically and he's good at containing foes on the battlefield Gamora is literally the deadliest woman in the galaxy, one of the best hand-in-hand fighters with a crazy sword. Then you have Drax, convicted outlaw and the galactic war hero at the same time. And by the way, there was this war that went on off screen in this game. That's what they're referring to. And by the way, when I'm going over how strong these characters are, I will be going over story spoilers. Let's get it. Naturally, Star-Lord is the leader of the team. He has these overpowered techie guns. They got an ice mode where you can shoot out ice. Then there's a different mode where he can shoot out wind. He even has a mode where he can shoot out electricity. They seem to activate randomly throughout the points of the story where the story seems fit. On this occasion, helping Drax using wind on this particular occasion to help Drax out. Or they go over the elemental guns, talking about how firearms passed out through generations of the Spartax monarchy. They are DNA coded to activate when anyone with royal blood wields them. They activate strictly for him as outlined right here. They automatically transform into melee weapons when the wielder punches. So yeah, they're kind of like some smart guns. They're even so advanced that weaponsmiths across the galaxy have long marveled at the lost technology beyond these weapons, but none have been able to re recreate them. Not even the Spartio. I actually have a video about Star-Lord on the channel. A lot of this stuff is just straight up full-blown comic book accurate. They're strong enough to literally pull doors down with the wind. You can get an idea of his power level by the people that he fights. They don't send no ordinarily weak looking beings after him when they want to collect bounties on him, meaning that he has some sort of reputation. He may not be the physically strongest on the group or the best hand-in-hand -hand fighter or skilled, but when it comes to his leadership skills there's something about him that helps him keep a level head the team often goes to him for plans and stuff like that whatever strength he does like he kind of makes up for the raw power of these elemental guns if he couldn't hold his weight what would be the point of him helping out characters like drax on his team he obviously can hold his weight along with hold his weight with characters like gamora who is the deadliest woman in the galaxy comes to his physicals he's not all that impressive but he's still probably in better shape than the average person wouldn't you say and then you got crew members like rocket the raccoon he has overpowered guns and they can even transform to bigger stuff and he's the one that helps the team get armor he's the one that gives the team tech upgrades he's the one that fixes the ship when the ship is in trouble stuff like that he's a very smart individual in the game's lore it's iron cartridge fed it was originally based on Cree infantry rifle this weapon may look small but it has different modes heck it's even jammed with a whole bunch of a gun some that are even far bigger than the core weapon he seemed to install a pocket dimension generator directly into his weapon allowing it to unfold and expand in impossible ways which is why you see rocket have big old giant guns shoot like that like that's just ridiculous all that jammed in this little thing like what the heck he's the guy you call when you want to hack into doors that they can't get through so yeah he's a great hacker as well when it comes to uh tech and the computer type stuff he likes blowing up stuff to where he can blow up stuff that big and then you have characters like gamora she lives up to her name because of her physiology she's definitely superhuman physically consistently throughout the game not to mention she has a weapon that allows her to be a threat for top tiers it's gamora's god slayer it's a gift from Thanos. it was forged from asgardian steel it's a weapon that can kill asgardian the god slayer itself has at least ended at least one Asgardian, thanks to Thanos knowing that Odin and Asgardians were a threat in this universe. The sword is implied to be a threat to top tiers. She's the reason why this guy right here, one of the main antagonists of the game from the Universal Church of Truth, has no arm. Gamora's God Slayer weapon is the reason for all of this. You get an idea of her acrobats like this, you see how she takes this villain down and stabs with skill. She's consistently practicing her sword skills and craft. It can cut up thick layers of ice. These mechs that the Guardians had to fight, known as the mechs of the Universal Church of Truth, she's a helpful aid in cutting them up. A clear indicator that she has physical strength above Peter in this game. Lily was able to stagger these same beings that Peter couldn't really stagger when they were close together in the game. These brutes right here. Look like Amora did this kick, showing that she's kind of staggering them, pushing them back, leaving them reeling a little bit. Her sword is a big reason and helpful aid against plenty of the many bosses they had to face in the game, like the Dweller of Darkness, for example, doing the finishing blow on the Dweller of Darkness. She ain't playing no games when it comes to skill. Creatures that are way bigger than them, or one could say beings that are house-sized. Notice how she slices the tentacle off, thanks to Peter freezing it first. 
She cuts through ropes with ease. There was been plenty of times in the games where she can literally throw Peter in the air with one arm. So in her physical ability, just casual, like one arm throw. Even happened in the cut scene, right? To further show her strength. I think she just likes cutting up stuff too. She does it too much to say otherwise. She even went through some character emotional progression in the story. But well, this is a game mechanic super move, obviously. But they stated up until that point in the game, she was holding back. So at that point, she no longer held back. This is like end game type stuff letting you know how deadly she is. It was literally stated that Thanos taught them that they use their own bodies as their most reliable weapon. The suit that came with the game's lore designed to enhance her natural movement, making her armor durable. And this armor in particular is canon to this game's lore. See that arm right there? Gamora is deadly. She took on Raker alone and even got his arm off. This is the same being that's been like one of the toughest beings in this game's universe. The same being that can take punches from Drax. This is the guy she took his arm off. Yeah, she literally went after him by herself. Like she wasn't having it. She's just very lethal with her sword combat. Like not even afraid to use hand-to-hand -hand combat as well. Straight on punching. <laughs> this god slayer weapon makes her life easier as well. Gamora was pretty confident that she can bust somebody they knew out of the kiln. One of the most deadly prisons in the galaxy jailbreaking the kill that's where you hold all the heaviest hitters she even said she'll bust them out she was confident about it i know she knows what the kill is drax is considered a beast warrior and she's even giving drax lessons on what he can improve look at the subtitles they even stated your angle of attack is off it's like she's telling them what to do the right way and drax is a skilled warrior that takes pride in his skills as well nice move there drax if I put my weight on my left foot, I have much better control over my right hook. People always underestimate proper footing technique. Well, focusing on the upper body alone is the mark of an amateur. Exactly. Weight distribution is crucial, especially with melee weapons. As a team, they're a beast, but characters like Groot are strong in their own right as well. Like, for example, Groot on many occasions in the battle ripped this thing's arm off with his raw strength, showing that Groot's a helpful asset. He doesn't even have a problem choke slamming his villains and teamwork against with Peter Quill. Like you see, like literally slamming him with strength. The great thing about him is that he can make constructs and they stay permanently even after he's done making the construct. In this occasion when they were trapped, Groot shows his strength here while this ice. See what I'm saying? Another occasion of Groot's power, even beings that are bigger than him, choke slamming him like that, rips the tail off. When it comes to the physical brutes of the team, Drax is definitely the number one. Raw punching power, just brute in general. Shout out to everybody that was in the live chat when I filmed this. <laughs> All the stuff we've seen Drax lift is nowhere near his full potential, massively more than his weight. Respect that raw power. I need that Thanos vs. Drax one-on-one -on -one fight in the sequel of this game, but that's none of my business. Drax, how do you keep from breaking your hands, smashing through everything? Catathian bone density. But you don't even have cuts on your knuckles. Catathian skin density. He's got plenty of occasions doing this in the game, even though part of it is literally just a puzzle and he can produce more, but the game limits him because of puzzles for the personal part of the story but yeah you get the idea he's very strong toppling over big things and seeing dragging big things throughout the game imply that other characters in this game couldn't do on this occasion he completely trucked group there was even a point in the game when he wasn't in his right mind and mantis had to be the one to kind of help him out when it comes to his emotions to further prove he's the brute of the group like everybody on the cast tried to pull him away and they couldn't showing his level of strength Good with knives. He has no problem busting through steel consistently. Don't want to be a broken record, but yeah, pulling heavy stuff. Punching steel through like it ain't nothing. Raw power. He's not afraid of hitting combos on you either. Can definitely lift big, huge 100 ton rocks and throw them like that. And there are many adventures. He slams creatures, showing his raw power. Suplex style. These rocks gotta weigh hundreds of tons, man. Look at that. But you can really see the size comparison between his actual body size and the size of this thick rock showing that yeah he can lift this stuff up his blades forged from ultra dense uru deep mined from the planet's nearest moon drax was even so strong when nova tried to arrest him he didn't even get captured he kind of turned himself in how'd they stop you nova Corps, i mean i surrendered that tells you a lot about this universe version of drax very comic accurate thanos does exist in this game and drax has even fought thanos not the biggest fan of his helmet design but his armor looks pretty dope they have a lot of lore in this game when it comes to the dialogue of stuff that happened off screen so they're kind of copying the comic source material this kind of is accurate on him being able to fight thanos and battle drax even explains it in this universe it's even implied he got amped up to be pretty much thanos's match just like the comic lore and his brother Cronus, they gave me a sleeping potion that would grant my greatest desire, finding and killing Thanos. When I awoke, 
I was changed. I could sense the Mad Titan's vile life force, feel it pulsating from across the galaxy. I followed the pulse in my mind until it led me to a moon in the Black Quadrant. I found Thano. Our battle waged for days, each of us trading blows across the moon's inhospitable surface, equal in strength. This kind of shows that he has incredible stamina. He literally fought for days, literally. I recall throwing a final swing before I collapsed from exhaustion. Like, the game is trying to leave the door open for sequels to where Thanos actually does appear again. And we maybe can fight Thanos playing as Drax in those games, maybe. But in this universe, it lets you know that he stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Thanos one-on-one. -on -one. Probably thanks to the enchantment from Cronus and being, like, built to, to fight him. During the war in this game's, you know, off-screen war that we never saw, he challenged Thanos himself twice. You faced Thanos twice? Twice? Yes. And we got a drum roll, please. This game version of Drax is a planet buster. He can, yes, he can actually destroy planets. He literally said it. This carnage brings back troubling memories of worlds I destroyed. Worlds I destroyed. Worlds I destroyed. What did you use to do that? Some kind of mega bombs? Blades. My own hands. And feet. Knees. Elbows. Often my forehead. Notice how Rocket was confused. He was asking him how did he destroy a planet with some kind of mega bombs? Logically, that's not a bad assumption, but Drex simply stated, no, it wasn't no mega bombs. It was just straight up blades, my own hands, feet. Like he literally destroyed planets with his strikes or blows. You're probably thinking, we didn't see him do it, but we don't have to see him do it. This statement is referencing the time in the comics when Thanos and Drax have fought and destroyed planets in collateral damage. This game's Drax can do the same via Lord and Writer Intent. He don't lie, he told the truth. He said, his blade, his hands, and feet, knees, elbow. Thanos is more than likely a planet buster in this game. The game is fleshed out with tons of lore and files explaining the different threat levels of different characters, so it definitely adds up. Drax himself is considered a planetary threat. It all makes sense to his lore. I don't think threat level actually lets you know how strong somebody punches. It's just letting you know how much of a threat he is. But it kind of adds up. Gamora, for example, she's not physically nowhere near Drax's level in physical strength, but she's still a galactic level threat. So that's why I say the threat level doesn't necessarily mean your punching power, but you get the idea. She's the deadliest woman in the galaxy, so naturally she is a threat level galactic. You know, and another reason why she's probably galactic threat level and Drex isn't is because of her relationship with Thanos too. You know how much of a threat Thanos was. How <laughs> they had Moon Dragon making a cameo appearance. She's galactic, strong telepath. That boy Quasar, basically the Green Lantern of Marvel. Ronan's in this game. Unfortunately, he wasn't a boss battle, but yeah, you see he's here though. Maybe we can get a Nova spinoff or something. Richard Ryder. To get a good idea of how strong these characters are, you got to get an idea of the characters they had to fight against in this game's universe. What's the background to what's going on? All that stuff it kind of can help you figure out how strong these guardians are as a team because they are the best when they are as a team well adam warlock's in the game he's basically the reason why the universal church of truth are wreaking all this havoc yes adam warlock was helping out the universal church of truth but it's not because he's just bad it's because he's kind of like naive kind of like how i explained in my adam warlock video i made a video in the past about how adam warlock and how strong he is in the actual marvel comics not necessarily in this game and in that video i kind of explained why he would help a cult like the church of truth think of adam warlock having terrible social skills he has very little interaction with human beings and very little interaction with beings that are alive in general kind of like a baby one could say this causes him to be naive which is why similar to comic lore in this game he ended up helping church of truth and was naive to help them <laughs> like in the comics how he tried to literally make sif mate with him because he wanted so he didn't know how that stuff worked it don't just work hey you mind it don't work like that adam the games seems to be following this same comic book path when it comes to his personality which is what led him to this downfall of the church of truth the cult sought interest in adam because of his supposed heavenly healing he ended up leaving them so they sought the find a new divine being to replace adam pretty much catching him at a low point he had so much power without purpose he like i said he didn't have no life experience they took advantage of this aspect about him and the leader of the universal church of truth known as raker was said hey i can help you with your stuff hey but can i use your power but adam didn't catch on to what his plot was they declared him divine started worshiping him and stuff like that it's the flock of followers fond dark delight developed deep within this is where it's important. His soul basically got split into two halves, similar to comic, Adam Warlock and Magus. It's all because of the soul stone, part being part of the reason why. Evil fools, fit for feasting. It was pure putrefaction, sown from the seed of my strength. My soul stone gone sour. 
I resolve to rip it out. Making one evil him like his evil twin, which should be kind of comparable to power, but this version of him, Magus, is kind of like a plague type of thing. Can grow in size, can do a lot of powerful things. It can get stronger with hunger and eating. Mechanical marvel wrought by Raker would sever the stone from my skull and excise the evil entangled within. Translation. You let Raker steal your powers. This is the reason why Raker ended up being so powerful in this game's lore. Split my soul in twain and cast us to the cosmos. I awoke half whole, certain the stone shattered. The other half of him is strong enough to like possess big artifacts, things at the same time, or even people, thanks to the soul stone being playing its part in all of this. Adam is one of the few people I don't think the Guardians can even take on. Even Gamora tries to hit combos on him, tries to contain him, he literally blocks a bomb with his hand, overwhelmingly powerful, blasters don't seem to do nothing to him, see what I'm saying, Gamora too, letting you know the, the raw power of him, they call him God throughout the game, and for good reason, Drax tried to slug it out with him here, showing Drax's power, look at the size difference though, gotta respect it. Seems like he kind of matched them for a second though. Adam Warlock is more than likely a Planet Buster on this game as well. Not to mention the Magus stuff I'm going to show you in a couple seconds. Adam Warlock is at the top of the food chain. Magus, which is basically the dark side of him. Grand Unifier Raker basically taking advantage of Adam Warlock's naive nature to harness his power, his healing power, faith energy, stuff like that. Which is why his whole cult is so powerful, creating force fields, energy blasts, conjuring up weapons, and all kinds of stuff. Get some kind of device sucking the life out of those brainwashed bucket heads. All of this is what the cult is doing, sucking the life out of people. Seems like on a planetoid scale, one can say. What are these frackling gaboons doing to Contraxia? Think they're using the ray to fill some kind of battery. The reason why he can't tell what kind of energy he is, because his faith energy, thanks to Grand Unifier, taking advantage of Adam Warlock in this occasion. Basically, the main reason on why they gave birth to Magus, his evil twin. And it's even stated in the lore that he is indeed the darker side of Adam Warlock. What does it feel like to have one soul torn in two? All this stuff stemming from Adam Warlock, the Church of Truth, using faith energy to suck the life out of folks, the power of people love. The Grand Unifier literally tried to get another divine being other than Adam Warlock since he thought Adam Warlock was gone. But that backfired because Magus was the dark side of him, which possessed this character that people in the game might not be familiar with named Nikki. They even call her the Divine Vessel. Like they're literally trying to have her replace Adam Warlock. That can't end well. That's only just Magus. She's basically just Magus possessed. The bond between Magus and Matriarch must be broken it harvests its hunger through the host nikki's like the head vampire if we cure her it'll free the rest why didn't you just say that this supposed faith energy or basically stealing adam warlock's powers or whatever is the reason why these different minions can make force fields out of energy barriers stuff like that energy projectiles all that nikki basically the matriarch you know the person they're trying to save in this game is extremely powerful thanks to all of this as well extracted her their flarkin machine and they're making the hand direct Right into it. She's literally absorbing all of the galaxy's faith energy from different beings in her? That's a lot of freaking bodies of energy. I'm assuming Adam Warlock is weakened in this part of the story because he actually got defeated by this guy, Raker. Please, give me an excuse to kill him. I do find it weird that Raker was able to defeat this guy with one arm, but that's none of my business. Maybe because he's not bonded with his true self or something. That's gotta be it, right? He's gotta accept Mags as part of his own. That's the only explanation I can think of, really. Let him watch me do what he could not. I'll draw faith across the entire galaxy myself if I have to. If you think you can handle... I'll handle whatever it takes. Long story short, she eventually got free and became evidently a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Cool thing about Nikki now is that even though she's free from all this faith energy stuff, she seems to still have abilities or power. But only this time, she is a good guy this time. See, Magus trying to possess her. She blasts with her back. She still seems to have abilities still. So that comes in handy, making the Guardians even more powerful than before. I mean, it was already a powerful team with Drex being a planet buster and the fact that she can repel Magus himself. You know she is up there. So basically, Adam Warlock getting his soul split to Magus, Magus possessing the girl, making her the new matriarch, making her the new divine vessel because that's basically Adam Warlock equal side in her. Raker being powered up by all this stuff too, which is why he's so strong. Similar to movie, Mantis even became a guardian of the galaxy in the game too, and she seems to have a mix of movie attributes and even comic book attributes of her being an actual martial artist. This is what they stated about the comic book lore. I know this is not necessarily in the game, but yeah, the game is following the comic book tropes when it comes to her fighting skills. In comic lore, they basically say that she has extraordinary fighting to the point where she knows exactly where to hit you in certain areas. They even state in comments that she can even stun beings as powerful as Thor, even though she herself has no superhuman strength. What kind of martial art is this? It states here, manipulation of pressure points and nerve endings on the 
other bodies on one's opponents. Even states here, Mantis had an empathic ability which enabled her to sense the emotions of others. Despite Drax being leagues above her physically, similar to comics, Mantis miraculously is able to get the advantage over him thanks to her knowing crazy martial arts and knowing exactly where to hit him. Using knives and etc. See, fingers, things like that. See what I mean? A lot of comic book Easter eggs in there. Drax even fell out, even though she's nowhere near his level of power. Lysa once taught me the art of striking one spot and many times. Sensing possible outcomes is a very handy asset for the team. And that's what she specializes at. Also, being able to keep Drax under control when he wasn't in his right mind. He was under the influence of the Church of Truth for a little while clutch on helping him out with that so now that you got an idea of how all these power levels work and why the matriarch and the church of truth and raker are so strong it's all because of adam warlock basically adam warlock and raker went at it in this game one-on-one -on -one. despite raker having a miraculous victory over adam warlock himself which is already mind-boggling gardens as a team was still able to take on raker despite the power of adam warlock of course, this is after many upgrades of Star-Lord, Peter Quill's guns getting evolutions throughout the game, of course. That's the respectable thing about the Guardians as a team. The team in general fighting Raker as a team, even though this guy beat Adam Warlock, which is impressive. Gamora, Drax working together. Groot overwhelming him with their teamwork. It's something you gotta respect, though. As powerful as Raker was. Yeah, defeated. It's hard to get a good idea of how fast these characters are, but they are consistently dodging or fighting people or characters in the universe that use plasma rifles or blasters or whatever. Even snipers from far away. You can literally see the snipers. I know this is probably a game mechanic, but there is some implication that Gamora might be, be able to move faster than I can see. She has this command move where you tell her what to do and she starts moving like a blur on screen. Like this right here. You see how she looks like? Zoop, 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 zoop. like straight blitz more adventures that they had off screen kind of gives you more development on what the gardens are capable of just as a team without the addition of nikki or mantis talking about they faced meteors in the past probably drax punching it apart or something maybe we faced meteors poison zit cats or snowmen when to go right and we beat them all i'd back this team against anything they even took on wendigos in this game i mean you got to respect it even took out the leader of the Wendigo for Pete's sake. And a multitude of different Universal Church of Truth creatures or robots. Combo attack, rocket shooting his gun, Gamora slicing, Groot, and etc. The team moving in unison is just epic to see. Combo attacks above, below, Groot hit him in the air, then slice with Gamora. Peter finishing them all. They've even fought powerful characters like Fing Fang Foom. Legends say that Fing Fang Foom can heal himself from one dimension to another choose to do so just look at the size difference between the guardians and fing fang foom and they literally was able to harm something this big working together as a group like it's massive and the fact that group can hold them down let you know the power of them oh yeah by the way star has these gatling gun type skill sets with his blasters respect it rocket with his over-the-top gun <laughs> literally lighting him up lady hellbender another strong warrior in the universe i think it's safe to assume that drax is stronger than her the fact that drax fought thanos and i do not believe she's on thanos level you know what i'm saying so yeah she seems to respect him a lot too she has a thing for drax even implied that magus aka the other half of adam warlock was going to kill and eat the galaxy one could say maybe galaxy busting potential because at the end of the game adam warlock and magus did actually merge together to become one again because that's the only way to really contain them with the soul stone adam just has to deal with the dark side of himself instead of just getting rid of it but speaking of magus the guardians actually did fight magus by the way the game even explains it here when you replay the chapters and all powerful magus warps reality itself Magus in this state, the Guardians couldn't actually defeat it. They actually had to use the stone on this occasion, though. The soul stone to trap him back in there. You know what I'm saying? He's literally holding planets in his hand. Like, you see this? Crushing planets like it ain't nothing. But th thanks to Nikki. Yep, got to contain that soul of Magus. And he's so powerful that he's far away and he's this big. Like, they literally can't touch him. He's too far away. Thank you, Nikki, for shielding the whole Guardians from Magus literally throwing a planet at him. Are you freaking kidding me? She's shielding from all of this, and she's officially a Guardian member now, thanks to all of this. Yeah, the Guardians of the Galaxy have gotten powerful. They may not be able to beat him in a straight slugfest, but they literally got shielded from my planet shattering on him.
she doesn't even know how she got this strong now, but she's like a baby version of Adam Warlock now. One could say, heck, she can even fly. You see this? She did it multiple times, shielding the Guardians from multiple planets being thrown at them. It doesn't even seem to be at her limit either. Guardians are just in great sync with each other. When it comes to teamwork, are you serious? Look at this. Ames, the Soul Stone like that. Gamora, working together. Taps it over there with the sword swing. Drax. Yeah, I heard him. Yeah, the stone. Used the stone to be the final guy to contain Magus. He felt like he had an obligation because he was the one that released him in the first place. They basically got two new members at the end, Mantis and even Nikki. One could even say Adam might be a member of the Guardians because in the comments he became a member of the Guardians, but that's none of my business. Basically, for this to be the first game in the saga, their characters don't really seem to be all that nerfed. There seem to be casual planet busters. Magus being able to throw planets casually. Nikki being able to tank the planet explosion and shield the rest of the Guardians casually. And it doesn't seem like it took that much effort thanks to her new power-up. Some of that is thanks to Nikki being part of the Matriarch for a little while, giving her a permanent power boost even when she became on the good side. If we assume that the planets that Drax has destroyed, because he's destroyed more than one planet in this game's world, that would mean Drax can produce 53 quadrillion megatons of force, and this is actually casually at that because, and he simply did it with blades, hands, feet, knees, elbows. This would kind of mean Thanos in his world can destroy planets as well. Same with Adam Warlock since Magus is literally just Adam Warlock's darker side, and he's back whole again at the end of the game. So yeah, these two can casually destroy planets in this game as well. And for Pete's sake, Magus was literally bigger than planets and he was able to hold planets in his hand and destroy him on panel, so. You guys remember that celestial head? Like the literal planet known as Nowhere, which is a celestial head? When Magus was still possessing Matriarch, look at all the stuff he was able to take over. Literally bigger than Nowhere, the planet. All of this getting consumed by Magus. Even Nowhere. Fing Fang Foom and Lady Hellbender? All of this was Magus. And the Guardians eventually overpowered the Grand Unifier. But what do you guys think? Do you like how cosmic this game got? Do you like the fact that they just went full-blown comic book power levels on this thing? Characters busting planets off screen? Characters stating that they bust planets accurate to comics? I just love all this lore. Seeing planets being busted on the screen by Adam Warlock's evil dark self, meaning that Adam Warlock could destroy a planet too if he wanted to. All of this stuff adding up to one is just impressive as heck. I'll see you guys later. Respect the Guardians of the Galaxy of this video game universe. The game even proved that super soldiers exist, like the Hyde formula, it's like stuff from Earth still exists, even the Thrall of Thunder exists. I visited all this when my playthrough in the collector's collection. If you haven't went to this place yet in the game, please go here in the game. You will see a lot of fun stuff. Even Fire Lord's Cosmic Stab, aka Heralds of Galactus, exist in this game's universe. Hey, that's a space type stuff. We might see Galactus in the sequel of this game. It's also proven that Angela in this game's universe as well because of the Blade of Ichor, Kang the Conqueror's Chair. The Cosmic Cube, and it's so funny how the Collector explains this here. The Collector literally has the Cosmic Cube in his collection. He even stated he used it to secure each of the artifacts in a protective pocket reality so you can't just go in here and just steal it. The Eye of the Watcher, this is kind of like an Easter egg to the comic story, Original Sin. I like how they even give information about the stuff here like Kang's Time Cheer. Cosmic Cube, baby. It would have to be in a pocket universe or else somebody can just come in this museum and rob the place. You can't just come in here and have this stuff on display. Somebody might get their hands on this artifact and just steal it. No. He made several cameos in here based on information they said in the game. The Book of Cagliostro, magical book proving that magicians exist here too. They even have information about Cagliostro's book, Unspeakable Curses. Even the freaking ultimate nullifiers in this game's universe. Overpowered weapon. Why would you even have this in the open? Small version of Mjolnir, Hamdel's blade, Yandu's arrow. They even give you information about Hamdel's sword, master crafted by dwarves of Nen de Valir. It was blessed to the gatekeeper. They even mentioned Mangog. They even stated that the ultimate nullifier can detonate entire solar systems, even timelines. Evidently, Nova has a mysterious disappearance in this game. That's why Richard Ryder wasn't able to help when we tried to contact him in-game footage. 